You're watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Uh, Carroll, they're a very disciplined team. Uh, we got to come in, do a good job, play hard, uh, play together. So I'm expecting us to come out with a little bit more uh, understanding that we got to play just as hard as they do on defense. And I told the guys not to guarantee two things. One more practice and one game. After that, there's no guarantee. So you got to leave it on the floor. As the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. It's the final Friday of the boys' basketball season, so no more Highlight Zone tier. The rest of the games from here on out, they're on Saturdays. However, we do go out with a bang this evening. Boys' sectional semifinals. You win tonight, you play for a title tomorrow. That is the case in your Highlight Zone game of the week. It's Colton Howard joins us now with more. Colton. And when it comes to 4A basketball, Carroll and Northrop are very familiar foes. Chargers beat the Bruins twice already this season, once in the SAC Holiday Tournament, and then again on Valentine's Day. Would it be a perfect trifecta for the Chargers, or would third time be the charm for the Bruins? Carroll versus Northrop, it's your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. To Charger Fieldhouse we go. Carroll had a, had a first round bye. Northrop got a scare on Tuesday before rallying to beat Northside by four. Doesn't take long for Northrop's stud, Quaylen Pettis, to get going. Pettis, first up, three is in, and the first points of the ball game go down. Still in the first quarter, inside the arch, it's Stan Sam Stricker. Jump shot goes in for two. Northrop ends the quarter ahead by one. Second quarter starts with an 8-0 run by Northrop that's capped off with this three from Nick Haynes. Horse and Carroll to call the timeout. Out of the break, Carroll rallying back. Ray Vollmer cashes in from deep, brings the Chargers within four at the half. Third quarter action, the extra pass over to Kamani Smith. Smith's triple sinks in, and the Bruins bust open an eight-point lead again to the fourth quarter. Put your fours up, Pettis in beast mode, splits the defense, takes this one coast to coast all the way to the other end, finishes it with the layup finished the night with 17 points and Northrop advances to the sectional championship winning 44 to 30. Yeah, it feel good man I'll tell you it feel good I ain't never gonna switch up on my guys they, they stayed down man they stayed down we played deep we locked up when we came out with a victory it ain't nothing better. You know the kids just believe man we really felt like even though we had lost the first two games to them we went and watched a lot of tape and realized there were some mistakes that we could correct and we concentrated on that over the last couple of days to kind of fix a couple things. And we just felt like, man, you know, if we could correct those things that we were doing wrong, we would give ourselves a chance. The only other question now is who would Northrop face in the late game at Charger Fieldhouse? It's Snyder and East Noble. There's Michael Ely right there. Stud, but you got to watch out for Hayden Jones, too. He can really tear it up. First quarter, Dylan Duff with the ball. Spin cycle is activated, splits through the D and gets the basket for two. Snyder goes on a 9-0 run to start the game. Time is ticking in the first. The swing over to Hayden Jones. Jones finishes with 27 points tonight. Snyder ahead by one. To the second quarter we go. Ball is poked away by Jayshon Underwood. Recovered by the Panthers. Check out this sequence. Duff to Ely for the alley-oop slam. The definition of teamwork. And Snyder wins it 66-52. So it's Snyder versus Northrop tomorrow for the sectional title at Carroll Chargers Fieldhouse. Glenn, back to you. Oh man, Northrop playing some good ball tonight. Let's stick with 4A. We head to Bob Strait Fort, New Haven and Huntington North. The Bulldogs have already beaten the Vikings twice so far this season. Donovan Lewis says, why don't we make it a third time? Lewis straight away for three. He had 24 points. That would lead the Bulldogs. Still in the first quarter, it's Samuel Thompson. Left wide open for three. New, uh, excuse me, Huntington North, maybe one of the more improved teams we've seen this season. They've given some teams some scares here in the late going. Jakar Williams inside for two of his 14, and New Haven now up 12 to 5. Later, you'll see Devin Newcomb for Huntington North, the senior, with a three to beat the first quarter buzzer. But New Haven goes on to beat the Vikings 68 51. Bulldogs advance. So, who will New Haven get tomorrow? Southside, Homestead, the Archers were beaten by the, by the Spartans by 26 in the regular season. Pick it up in the third, Alec Grinsfeld is so tough, he lays it up to extend Homestead's lead to 45-34.
still in the third. Zavion Hollister on the kick out, on the kick in. Finds the basket right there. That would cut into the lead. It was 45-36, but Southside still down. However, not out. Hollister, this is the one. He drills the three right there, but Luke Goody had himself a night. You're going to see the junior. Got a lot of offers from Big Ten schools. He would nail it as Homestead wins 84-63. So we got New Haven versus Homestead tomorrow for the sectional championship. For a action in Elkhart, Warsaw facing Penn. Tigers coach Doug Ogle right there announcing this week that he's retiring after the season. Warsaw fans hoping this game would not be his last. Late first half, that's Brock Poe Nevermore with the jumper. And then a couple possessions later, it's Jalen Kuhn. And Kuhn starts to go off. He would drill the three and then get more. Coach Ogle going to get at least one more night with these guys as Warsaw wins 58-54 over Penn. Warsaw will take on Northridge tomorrow for the crown. 3A down in Ossia, Norwell ranked sixth in the state coming into the postseason in 3A. And after a bye in the first round, they were taking on conference rival Belmont. Will Geiger, the senior in the third quarter, gets the bucket. And the Knights up by double digits. Isaiah Wellman coming the other way. Then it's Eli Riley. We're used to seeing this guy make plays in the highlight zone as a quarterback during the football season, but he can hoop as well. Let's fast forward to the fourth. Tyler James is good. But the freshman, Luke McBride, the coach's kid, they got some young guys on this Norwell team that are playing real well as Norwell wins it 64 to 46. I think our defense was like the biggest key. We try to stop them, trying to stop them from like shooting open threes and like make them not get easy points in the paint. My four years here, we haven't been in a uh, sectional championship yet, so uh, it's, it's really exciting and I want to be ready and want to make sure the team's ready. So who will Norwell get next? Heritage battling Mississinawa. Old Miss coming in the favorite, ranked 15th in the 3A state poll. Luke Saylor, only a freshman. He's had some big games this year for the Patriots. He gets the bucket in the first quarter, but Ty McClung, strong inside. It's an and one, and Old Miss out to the lead. How about Luke Saylor again? He is a name to know for, oh, you know, the next three seasons in Monroeville. But Anthony Horton, and his club just too much. You're going to see Horton get the bucket as Mississinawa wins 70 to 50 over Heritage. So we got Mississinawa versus Norwell. Two really good 3A teams playing tomorrow. 3A at Paul Bateman Gymnasium, Angola and Concordia. The Cadets coming off a 10 point win over Dwenger on Tuesday. Angola had a bye, but the Hornets have won four in a row coming in. That's Joel Knox knocking it down. But the Hornets down by eight in the third. Concordia's Arnaud Samarjic with the and one, and then it's Braden Pearson, the senior down low. He led Concordia with 17, and the Cadets up 35-21, heading into the fourth. Brian Parrish for Angola with the two there, but you're going to see Jaron Kindig get the shooter's touch, and the shooter's bounce there. It's 47-40, Concordia over Angola. You know, we came into the sectional with a good mindset. You know, we're 0-0. Zero and zero. You know, they didn't predict us to win our first game or second game. We came in knowing that we had beat them. We were able to beat them again, and we just had that tough mentality. Late game at Garrett, Woodland, and Leo. These two played uh, the last Friday of the regular season, matter of fact. Lions won it by 20. First quarter action, the Purple Pride coming out hot. Eric Steger can't leave him alone. He nails the three, but Woodland countering Trevor Wiedenhoff. Nails it from deep, and then it's Mitch Mendenhall. He had 28 the other night. But the lead slip, slip, slipping away from Woodland. It's DJ Allen. He's a problem inside. He gets the two right there. And then in the second quarter, you're going to see Mr. Consistency Blake Davison do what he does as Leo wins big 66 39. We got Leo in Concordia tomorrow at 7 o'clock. 3A action at Northwood High School. West Noble taking on Northwood at 16 and 6. The Panthers favored to win this sectional coming in. Pick it up in the fourth quarter, it's Joel Mast. It falls, the kid can play some tennis as well, but apparently a pretty decent hoopster. Then it's West Noble's Abdullah Saleh from distance there, but simply too much Northwood when shots like this are going down, it's simply your night. It's Trent Edwards stumbling into a deuce as Northwood wins this one 52 to 33, eliminating the Chargers. Next in Napanee, Wawasee and Lakeland. The Lakers coming off a 21-point win Tuesday. That was against Tippy Valley. And we picked this one up in the first quarter. Lakeland's Bracey Shepard for three. 
But the Lakers down in the early going, and Wallace C starting to put the pedal to the metal. Wallace C's Austin Miller catch, shoot, nail it. He tripled there, and then you're going to see Miller. Obviously, he can shoot. He apparently can make a good cut off the backdoor feed. And Lakeland falls to Wawasee 56 to 45. So we got Wawasee versus Northwood tomorrow night for the sectional crown. Well, we got 4A and 3A in the books, but we're going to take a two minute timeout. And coming up after the break, some big time matchups in the smaller classifications. We're talking a huge night of hoops up in Topeka. Co conference champs Churubusco and Westview going head to head with the season on the line. How about at Manchester? Blackhawk Christian taking its talents to two-way this year. Could South Adams slow them down? And we're going to head up to Fremont and Southern Wells. Yeah, for some 1A hoopage, we're including High Fly and Lakewood Park. A good night for Lakewood. All coming up next in the zone. For the Leo Lions, stay tuned for more Highlight Zone. Yeah! You can view us and more on the Highlight Zone. <laughs> when Churubusco and Westview got ready to tip off tonight, statistically it was looking like they were looking in the mirror. Warriors going 10 and 1 in conference, Eagles also 10 and 1 in conference, the two splitting the NECC title. Now the good news is no sharing championships in the postseason, right? Westview ranked fourth in two-way. Busco 17th, third quarter. It's Westview Drew Litweiler off the good feed. But Westview down 35-28. Charlie Yoder starts to get hot. That's scary for opponents. He cuts it to one at 35-34. But Hunter Perlick nails a big three for momentum's sake late in the third. And Busco up 44-39 heading into the fourth. Busco. Oh, yeah. In front of that home crowd for Westview, it's Gage Machine Gun Kelly popping one in. 50-44 Busco. Then Jackson Paul, the coach's kid. Finding his way to the rack as Busco beats Westview at Westview 58 to 50. In our uh, huddle and the timeout, we said, you know, we don't want this to be our last game. I thought guys started really going after the glass. We started defending. We just played for one another. It was, it was awesome. We completely said, just completely don't let Charlie get it. Don't let Charlie get it and uh, layups and free throws. And um, it, it's an amazing feeling, amazing win. So who does Busco get tomorrow? Central Noble ranked eighth in the state in 2A. The Cougars already a program record. 21 wins this year, but you know what? They need 22. Carson Miller to Tony Harden for three, and Bremen jumps out to a nine-zip lead. Yeah, Coach Bodie not exactly psyched about that. He would like this, though. Sawyer Yoder for two of his 24. Second quarter action now. More from Bremen. Tony Harden to Carson Miller to Trevor Devine for the layup. The guys in green playing really well this week, but guess what? Connor Asijan is an assassin. He already has 1,000 points, and he's only a sophomore. He would pick up 22 tonight. Central Noble survives 60-57. to 57. They will get Busco tomorrow for a title. Staying in two-way, we head to the jungle out in Manchester. Back-to-back -back TRC champ Wabat facing Canterbury in the fourth. Noah Drapala with the three. Wabash up 54-49, though, and... Well, they've got some players that can really close out a game. Trenton Daughtry, the senior, gets the bucket. It's a 56-49, seven-point Apaches lead. Then you're going to see Jared Holly do it for three for the Apaches. And Wabash up by 11 in the fourth. But guess what? Canterbury comes all the way back to win this one. You're going to see Will Shank. He had 30. This is the go-ahead jumper late in the fourth. Drapala had 21 as Canterbury wins it 69-66. We came out a little soft, a little weak, and they came out hitting shots and definitely hit us in that first half, but we came out of the second, second half ready to play and ready to go hard. I knew we could win it. Um, you know, we just had to stay solid uh, throughout the entire game, and I know we would come up strong and finish in the end. Late game in Manchester, Blackhawk Christian, of course, up to 2A this season after winning the 1A state title last year. The Braves facing a 13-win South Adams team. Zane Burke, the junior for three. So many weapons for Coach Mark Davidson. But the other way, you're going to see Aiden Warner, a sophomore who uh, really exploded on the football field this past fall. He gets the layup, and it's a 3-2 Blackhawk lead in the early going. 
How about James Arnold, a Fab 15 selection at quarterback during the football season? The kid is just an all-around athlete. South Adams led by one in the first, but you're going to see Burke bury another three as Blackhawk wins this one 83-46. to we got Blackhawk and Canterbury, a couple rivals, going head-to-head -head tomorrow night. 1A sectionals up in Fremont, first game of the night, Elkhart Christian Academy versus Hamilton ECA, pretty darn good basketball team. This is Charlie Maxwell in the third quarter with the Pilfer and the Pear, and ECA up 44-13 on the Marines. More from Elkhart Christian, it's Bryce Corson in the corner for three, 52-13 at that point. You're going to see Hamilton get a bucket here, it's Isaiah Gesselman. Nailing a three of his own, but Hamilton falls in this one by a final of 83 to 30. Nightcap at Fremont, the host Eagles taking on Lakewood Park Christian. Panthers looking for win number 12 on the season. This would not help Lakewood Park. We're talking Logan Brace with the deuce for Fremont. The Eagles on the board first, but Cademan Bontrager. He had 34 points last Friday, including five dunks. He gets the bucket down low. Then it's Carter Harmon for three as Lakewood Park takes care of business 66-41. You got ECA and Lakewood Park tomorrow for a championship. Let's go to the Raider Dome down in Pinedo. Lakeland Christian Academy facing Northfield. The North beat North Miami by 35 on Tuesday. It would not be that easy tonight. Caleb Crom with the layup in the first quarter, but it's 17-9 Lakeland Christian. How about Cameron Shepard for the Cougars? Beats the double team, kicks it to Landon Paris, and Paris knocks down the three. You're going to see Seth Martin for LCA do the same as Lakeland Christian beats Northfield 59-43. Lakeland Christian going to face Southwood tomorrow for a sectional title. Over in Ohio, Antwerp putting its perfect 24-0 record on the line. The Archers facing Toledo Christian in the Division IV district title game. Late second quarter, Antwerp down, but Javen Anderson, Landers, Javen Landers beats the buzzer. The Archers down at the break. Fast forward to the fourth. Antwerp can take the lead with the bucket. Austin Leishty. He nails it. Archers now up. You can see they're pretty excited. Last chance for Toledo Christian late in the fourth. Cole McWinney to Trevor Wensink. It doesn't go as Antwerp rallies to win the district title and stay perfect 55 to 50. We got more zone, including your play of the week. Next. We're the Fremont Eagles. Stay tuned for some more sectional highlights. On the Highlight Zone. Yeah! Hey, I'm Caleb Swanigan, Purdue grad and Homestead grad, and you're watching the Highlight Zone. Oh, you can bet Biggie had some plays of the week, but for our final play of the week this season, we got to go back to Charger Fieldhouse, Jay Sean Underwood, to Dylan Duff, to Michael Ely. It's a thing of beauty all the way all around. Jay Sean getting on the floor, Duff looking up and throwing it to Ely, who throws it down. Snyder going to get Northrop tomorrow for a sectional crown. Let's stick with hoops. We're talking Mad Ants still alive in the old playoff chase. Ants hosting the College Park Skyhawks. Alizé Johnson, strong move in the post there. He had 20. Stephen Hicks, he was pretty darn good tonight. He had 30 points that would lead the Mad Ants. Later in the second quarter, it's Naz Mitru Long. You're going to see Naz with the Little fade away. That's a thing of beauty as the Mad Ants win this one 116 to 112. Ants back in action Sunday against Grand Rapids, 5 o'clock at the Coliseum. Hey, on the ice, Comets on the road at first place Cincinnati. Case looking for their third straight win. Unfortunately, they would come up short. Nil nil in the second period. Johnny Cogwin with the goal to beat Cole Kaler. At the beginning of a long night for the K's, they lose three to zip, but the K's are back home tomorrow night against Kalamazoo for Hall of Fame night. We're talking Schrock and Doc. Our final stop, Hillier Gate Sports Center. Volleydons ranked 16th in the country, hosting Sacred Heart. You're going to see Richie Diedrich, the senior from Florida, slam one home, and the Dons win this one three games to nil over Sacred Heart. That is going to do it for this year's edition of the Highlight Zone. Colton Howard will have you covered tomorrow, and we'll be back on The Zone come August.